Oh. Hey, live on Pat Soundbites Unplugged Podcast, keeping new music alive on the radio, on the video, you name it, I got it. And there's great new music all over the world. And I am super excited today because I got David Collison, giant on the on deck circle to promote Nelson and Soto vacation in the underworld. And I got to record my pre ordered one day, which you should. So I'm going to talk to David about it and I'm going to show you this. Oh, killer vinyl. But in the meantime, as you know, I am getting ready to launch a little Squid TV, which is promoting the video. So when you get to see the video, hit the subscribe button, the uh, the like button, and support uh, Dave and Jeff, the amazing Jeff Scott. So I got my Trans-Siberian Orchestra shirt on as Jeff could not join us today. But let's time to play The Reason. vacation in the underworld dave come on back and join us how are you my friend what's going oh, on man, dave i love every bit of this album great to see you great job oh my goodness i i said to jody i gotta we gotta talk to dave jeff and anybody that wants to talk we've been playing uh vacation in the underworld and now gonna throw on the reason and uh i don't know every time i play the album dave I got like a new favorite. I was like, before it was like writing on the wall. I'm like, I was like, crank it up. But yeah, it's all all very good stuff. It came out on October 7th. I went and pre-ordered it right away because I knew it was going to be explosive and great. And in Europe, it comes out on November 11th. Exclusive license on Rat Pack Records. And I'm going to show you in a second. But uh, man, you and Jeff hit it out of the park. Now, I know I think I talked to you Last year, when you guys did the uh, cover of the riot, uh, so what is this? Um, Thor's in tequila. So, this isn't right. your first rodeo with the uh, incredible Mr. Jeff Scott Soto. Well, and the truth be told, we were actually, um, we were probably at least halfway or more into the making of this record when we popped Swords and Tequila out. In fact, Jeff even said he goes, I think it'll be a cool little way to kind of tip our hand that we're doing something and, you know, run one up the flagpole. And we invited our friend Rick Hughes, who's the singer of a terrific band out of Canada called Sword. And so he duetted on that with Jeff. Um, and yeah, it, it definitely got saluted big time. And, and so it did let, you know, let a, you know, we already knew we were on the right track. You know, you can, you can tell, man. I mean, you, you know, when you're a musician and you're, you know, writing songs and of course, you know, when we made this record, it was during COVID, so we had to do it virtually. But, you know, either literally in the band room or virtually in the band room, you, you know when there's something special happening. And we knew we had that with this one. And that's why we just kept trucking and just kept writing more songs. What We have 15 or 16 songs, I think, with all the bonus tracks up online and everything. And, uh, you know, this one was this one felt good, man. I'm not going to lie. In fact, I've been chomping at the bit. I mean, this thing's been done now for over a year. And we've just been chomping at the bit to get it out. And, 
you know, of course, vinyl delays that happened. So we just, you know, we just had to sit tight and just let Rat Pack do their thing. They did a wonderful job setting it up and obviously all the vinyl and cassettes and all the different formats. So it's, you know, it was, it was what it was like waiting for Christmas. I mean, this one was really something special. The minute it was announced, I said, I got to go out and get the bundle. And I encourage everybody I know with a little green screen action is probably. So I got, and I was shocked actually, uh, David, that I got it right away because, you know, with all the vinyl pressing, like you said, now, now that explains it because it took a while and you guys had it all done. You can get that and you get a nice autograph from Dave and Jeff, a little poster that I'm going to frame, yeah. put in my office. But, I have one myself. Mine's not autographed. I, I, I got to get her autographs on it. <laughs> but I have the same thing. But this is amazing. I have yeah. never. I got red. I got orange. I got every color. But nobody has done that. And when you put it on yeah. the turntable, it, yeah. it is just so cool looking. And yeah. the tracks are just incredible. So if you haven't done so already... Is it, it is a limited, right? Uh, trans, uh, transparent green, a uh, limited to only 300. So, yeah. yes, this stuff is gonna sell quickly. That is, yeah, I mean, Rat Pack, you know, it's funny, they 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 did a great job. I mean, they set it up, you know, knowing that, you know, Jeff and I come from a certain era, you know, a certain genre. And I think as we were making the record, it, it, it was important to look we the songs were already being written me and andy martin jelly who's the guitar player in our group you know we were writing the stuff we started sending him over to jeff he just, everything he was coming back with was just totally on point and you know and as we, as we, the record was being you know re recorded and, and we were writing it it's sort of like you know it's a pretty good representation of if you think of what does david ellison and Jeff Scott Soto, what are these guys knowing their history and the pedigree of, of, you know, hard rock and heavy metal and stuff? What would it sound like? I think we, I think we nailed it. <laughs> I think this is exactly oh, what it would sound like. Put out of and, the at, at, and that's why I think with Rat Pack, you know, to do again, do the, the, the bundles, you know, the vinyl, you get the patch, you get the pick, you get the cassette, you know I mean? The whole, the whole nine, man. And, and it's such a, you know, I, I'm the same as I was talking to a manager friend of mine today about how, Studies show that although vinyl sales are through the roof again, um, and I will buy vinyl or I'll, like in this case, I'll, I'll get one of my own. I'll probably never listen to that thing. I'll, I'll set it in my record collection and then I buy it on iTunes. I put it in my phone and that's when, I, when I'm traveling. That's how I listen to music. And for me, it's because I'm usually on the fly. I'm on the run touring or whatever, uh, you know, traveling. So for me, you know, vinyl is this pristine thing. I, I'll go into vinyl shops um, around the world and I won't buy brand new vinyl. I'll buy like some old 1978 Judas Priest, you know, or the Knack or 38 Special or Bachman Turner. I'm driving up. I buy basically the old versions for like, they have them there for like $6 and they're beat up and they're used. But to me, it's like, this is the original you know, kind of the original pressings from back in those days. And I, I love them because, again, I'm not going to listen to them. They're all scratchy and stuff. But it's like just to open the gatefold, read the I credits, look at all the stuff. I mean, to me, it, it, it's part of the experience for me as a, as a music listener. Well, I miss all that, David. I mean, that was me going to the record and... and Honestly, I didn't even. Maybe I need to buy another one because I was. I did not even want to take it out. I'm like, yeah, oh, I know. This is, this is too good to be. And you know, you you mentioned Rat Pack. They when I got this uh, delivered, it was. I don't know if I could do it right, but it was real. It's it's done very professionally. Exactly I like mine. I got the same. There thing. you go. The exactly. Yep. I, I, yep. The way it was yeah. packaged, it was. It's. It's really. I mean, they got fragile. They got everything on it, but uh, yeah. it's really cool. You. You were just on tour in Italy, right? You and Jeff hooked up yep. and actually did a bunch of songs. Were you able we to, to showcase any of the songs on the album? We did. Well, as your T-shirt says, Trans Siberian Orchestra. That's a big gig that Jeff does every year. For um, so that. You know, that kind of, you know, bookends his year. So knowing that that's coming up here in the next month or so, I said to Jeff, I said, you know, we've got this little window of time where he was finishing a show over in Europe. I said, look, I got to get over there for some other stuff anyway. Let's take a week. We'll rehearse. We'll go out and we'll tour around Italy. So we did Turin, Milan and Rome. And we played these songs, um, you know, a good, a good portion of these songs, actually. And, and you know, it's interesting because, 
you know, we don't have any other material. This is it, right? And and we played a couple of our past songs, you know, Peace Cells and, you know, I'll See the Light Tonight, you know, a couple little things that owe to our past. But for the most part, you know, we wanted it to be, you know, Ellis and Soto. So what was interesting is to play new songs that no one had heard because the record wasn't even out yet. This was a couple of weeks before the record came out. And to play them for people, um, you know, our fans are excited. We're there. We're performing. So that's part of the excitement. But to listen and really engage in the song and go, wow, this is cool. This is hooky. I get it. Um, I can follow along. You know, a lot of new songs, new albums aren't like that. You know, they're right. they take a while. I learned from radio people there. They call them a one listen record, a two listen record and a three listen record. The one listen is, I think, what we have here, which is you put it on. You get it right away. I mean, right. to me, Appetite for Destruction was like that. Um, you know, some of my favorite records, you just you put them on once, like you just you're in love, man. This is this is this the shizbo. Two listen is like okay, I I like it, I want to hear it again. You know, it's you do right. And um, Rush records were like that for me. You know, like a Farewell to Kings and things. I'd be like, yeah, it's cool. And then after I listened the second time, I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm in. And then there's the three the three listen record, and that's the one that grows on you over time. You know what I mean? That you, you, you like it, then you really like it. And then you can't get it off your turntable because you're just, it's, you know what I mean? And, and I, I would say I've had a couple rush records like that, that at first I was like, man, they're turning some pretty hard corners here, man. I don't know if I'm down with this, but the more I listened to it and, you know, had it in my cassette deck driving to high school as a kid, I'd be like, okay, I get it. I get it. I'm in um so you know there's that kind of a but i i think this one is for sure a one lesson you get it right out of the gate and it worked live and so hopefully there'll be some more shows you know maybe in the new year once uh jeff's schedule frees up a little bit yeah i always try to t- I, I know jeff does the west coast group and i'm over here in new york going to switch once and i got yeah. to meet jeff a couple of times and he was just actually in new york what uh, early may with jason bueller but I got to hang out with them with down to their show, which was a comedy show and a half. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, when you think of Jeff, I think, of, you know, the melodic and all the, all the stuff that he puts out. And when you put this on, this show is a different, to me, it was a different side of Jeff that just melted well with the songs and, and the music behind it. I think people will be a little bit surprised. Maybe I'm wrong to hear when you think Jeff's not song, you think, okay, where's the hook? Where's the melody? Where's the, you know, you know, and then you hear this and you go, whoa, it's a little heavier, a little, darker, yeah. a little, little deeper. And I'm like, wow, man. Well, as Luckily, we were traveling, everybody wants Jeff. Yeah, no, as we were traveling, I, and I agree with you 100%, as we were traveling around, you know, he said, he goes, you know, for as much as I've made metal records, you know, Ingbe, Rising Force, and these things. He goes, I'm, I'm really not a metal guy at all. You know, he goes, I grew up with like Motown and, you know, all these, all those kind of things. That's really what he grew up with as a singer queen, you know, a lot of that kind of stuff. Of course he sang in journey. So that just goes to show he understands, you know, pop songwriting. But the reality of it is, is, you know, I grew up with that same stuff too. You know, I grew up with all that stuff, sticks and, um, uh, you know, early, like I said, Bachman Turner overdrive foreigner, you know, that stuff when I was just a kid, you know, that was the stuff that was coming out on the on the on the radio um, back in the Midwest where I was growing, <laughs> excuse, excuse me, where I was growing up, REO Speedwagon, all this kind of stuff. So, you know, I grew up with with melody, you know, and and men singers who could really sing, even if it was Ted Nugent or Derek St. Holmes or something, you know, guys that could really hit pitches, sing, they could harmonize well. So, you know, to work with Jeff um, and to kind of pull him over to a little bit of a heavier right. you know more ferocious guitar riffing uh and this is not a speed metal album by any by any means but it, it's for sure is a power metal record you know and and i think has the european flavor to it and i credit you know my guitar player andy with a lot of that i'm a fan of that kind of music so for me i think bringing jeff in sort of gave it this power metal validity you know um because he's a hero to those, you know, the people that like, you know, Nightwish and all these kind of groups that are popular now. I mean, they they grew up looking to Jeff because he sang with Sweden's royalty, which is Ingve. You know what I mean? Right. So, you know, I am a Viking. I mean, come on, that that is that is the we will rock you of of power metal, you know. <laughs> 
to but I mean, and he's got a unique sound. I mean, the minute you put it on, you go, "Wow!" Is this? I mean, if you didn't know it was Jeff, and you know Jeff, you go, "Wow, this is Jeff." Yeah. And he's yeah. and everybody wants Jeff on a track. I mean, I was just hanging out with Joel Holster, and Joel put on. I had Jeff on his first album, and he's right. like, you know, everybody's like, oh, my, "See if right. Jeff's available." But uh, when no, you, I agree. Je- you know that that's one of the hardest things is to have a sound, and of course, singers probably have that maybe a little easier on some level because you're born you know look we're born with our voice you know what i mean and that's and obviously great singers um can morph that voice into different things and a guy like jeff who's done a lot of uh you know not only his own solo stuff but he sang for other people you know you're required to change your voice to to fit maybe the person you're replacing maybe it, it needs to transition a bit to fit the style of music so on this one, yeah, we wanted the full freaking throat, the full diesel and, you know, gasoline that he has, like bring all of that, you know? So, yeah. um, you know, so you're right. It's, it's, uh, I think it's a record that if, if you, if you know, Jeff, you certainly hear him on this one. If you didn't know of Jeff's voice, I think you're going to go, Whoa. Oh, who yeah, is that? Who is that? Yeah. Right, who is exactly. that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, I know I, 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 I've asked him before. I said, it's gotta be a challenge if you, Somebody says, hey, I want you on my tracks, and they send you the tracks. Because as a singer, you got to emotionally sell it like you wrote it. And you got to understand mm-hmm. what they were thinking when, you know, when they brought you on and, and what, what was in their mind musically and lyrically. <laughs> and he said, oh, yeah. yeah. And you just hit it on the, on the, on the head, David, of saying, you know, you got you to, gotta like, you know, change that sound a bit to make it work for this right. particular album. And well, and, and you're right about that. I, I write lyrics a lot you know, for every band I've been in, I write, um, and I can sing them enough to demo them on some new stuff that I'm working on. I'm actually singing lead vocals on stuff, but in particular on this one, obviously I was writing for Jeff, you know, so I had to... Um, Jeff in mind, right? You're thinking with yeah, Jeff in mind. Yeah, so I'm thinking of his range, thinking of, okay, the song, this is what the song calls for. Fortunately, Jeff can sing anything. So our tuning was in a key that fit his voice well. So we didn't have to really modulate or change anything structurally in the songs. And then also writing the lyrics. You know, the first one was I had that song writing on the wall that you mentioned. Um, and I'd, I'd had that song kicked around for like five years, done, recorded. I just wow. was finding a voice. You know, it's like it's like having a picture frame and you're going, OK, I'm trying to find the picture. Oh, there's Jeff right there. Oh, there it Dang, is, right, you know? right. And so he sent it back to me, and I mean, just knocked it out of the park. It was, it was perfect. And um, and then you know, I, Andy, it was actually Andy. He said, he goes, just, he goes, just send it over to Jeff. You already like the guy. You love his voice. Just send it to him. And then once he sent it back, I was like, Andy, check this out. He goes, dude, I'm telling you, let's send him some more. So we sent him um, "Sharpen the Sword." We sent him that music, which is a, a song Andy wrote, and and. Uh, and and a real a real face melter kind of thing, and and he came back with something, and that to me that was the benchmark because he knocked out something that was kind of a ballad writing on the wall, and then to hit something that was really pushing the limit of of melodic creativity with with such a ferocious riff, and to sing it with such power because there's no backing down, you really got to give it your all, you know, and, and, and now all of a sudden it was kind of like, there was sort of the audition for Jeff in my mind of like, okay, this guy can do everything. No then we just started singing him, sending him more stuff. And, um, and then he and I started writing some stuff together, celebrity trash. I sent him the, the framework of that lyrics that had a lyric and a title, you know, kind of around that he actually changed it to celebrity trash, but um it's uh and he kind of kind of finished the storyline of it i said we i sent a vacation in the underworld uh the music and i i said here's a, a lyric idea that i have um and then he took that and then he he finished the story he sang it um you know and then even even like um the revolution uh i it was music that was done i sent it to him a friend of mike and i we collaborated on the lyric um and said he kind of here's where i hear me hearing the phrasing and some rough vocal melody ideas you know so jeff was <coughs> excuse me jeff was great at being able to um take some sort of artistic direction from the composer which me or andy or whoever and then also us to be able to sit back and go you know 
look, he's Jeff Scott Soto, man. I mean, he knows what he's doing. Like, we don't have to micromanage the guy. And and I think that was one thing he was really happy about. He goes, man, it's really refreshing to walk into something and not have everybody just all over my shit and micromanaging everything I do. I mean, some bands are that. This was not going to be that. I figured, look, we got the best players. Let the best players do what they do. Let them be their best, you know? And if we got to find, you know, shape a couple things or, or tweak some direction a little bit that's that's understandable but for the most part you know freaking you're here because you're awesome man we want to hear you do what you do so awesomely you know so that that's why i think you hear that in the record you hear this this real just natural organic spirit about it where we all walked in the room and and just sort of sort of planted the flag and it just freaking worked man it just connected I, I, I love the flow of the album, David. I like the flow of the tracks where it starts mm. with vacation and just goes and takes off. And uh, that, that means a lot for me. I mean, it's not an album just put together with bullshit fillers. I want to hear right. the whole thing. And like you said, there's a one play to two play. All right, let me hear it again. And the more I play it, the more I find myself really getting attached to other songs going, well, wait a yeah. minute, it's a little bit better. But yeah, you know, Jeff, Jeff is a professional doing his 30, 40 years. He knew yep. this was his first rodeo and he knew exactly. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm sure your hair was staying when you got that thought going, holy crap. Man. Yeah, no, because I, I said when, when we signed the deal with Rad Pack, they brought in Chris Collier to uh, to do the mix on it. And um, so I worked with Chris and I'm here in Scottsdale. He's over in Las Vegas. So we would spend some, a lot of late nights just kind of going through things, tweaking a little bit. And again, he's phenomenal. I mean, he has corn and all these top level guys. So um, I let him be great and we fine tuned a few things, but for the most part, um, he and I would go back and forth too. go, man, what do you think? Should we, we got to put, what did we put on here? We put 10, there's a 10 songs in the vinyl. You got 11 and then, tracks um, and then three bonus. Three bonus. Yeah. So, we're, and so we had to make some decisions like, okay, this is what we need for the vinyl and the CD. Here's what we can put on the cassette. Here's what we can put as bonus tracks. And then in what order do we put the bonus tracks? So, you know, there's a lot of these little executive decisions you make along the way when you're producing a record. So I, I, I referred to Chris because he said the same thing. He goes, man, like out of the blue, which is that piano ballad. He goes, man, he goes, I just love this song. He goes, unfortunately, I don't know where, how the hell that's going to fit in between you know, just celebrity trash and they to die another, like, where right. are they going? That, so, you know, those, those are just some of the decisions you have to make along the way going, we got 15 smoking tracks here. They're not all going to get invited to the party. And but everyone's going to come to the party, but some are going to have to be out on the patio. You know what Round I mean? Going two, to those right. Yeah. So, you two. know, we had to sit some over there for digital and, um, so, you know, but, but it was nice because it's, it, it was just good to have a, a fresh outside ear come in as the, as the mixer and, and uh, help with some of that stuff. And you're right. I, th I think we got a, a really good running order. It flows like an album. Uh, you and I are certainly of an age where, you know, when we bought an album, it, it wasn't just a singles market. It was an, it was an LP market, you know, and we bought right. records because, we wanted to hear the whole story and have the whole experience. It's got the lyrics. It's got this incredible piece of work. I mean, Rap Pat really hit it outside the box. It got a little digital downloads if you want. There's guitar picks somewhere <clears throat> over here. I mean, go to yeah. Wilson and Soto. Go to Rap Pack. Um, oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm just so happy for you guys. I'm like... Thank I've been you. waiting for something to give me the wow factor. And I, I tell you, <laughs> David, that got me the wow factor. Uh, Just in I time said, for Christmas, we got you the wow factor. I got awesome. the wow. Yeah, you know, it's like, you know, when you go, <laughs> eh, it's a thing. It's good. And, but there's not plenty of them that go, oh, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. So yeah, yeah. vacation in, in the underworld released already in the States October 7th. As you can see in Europe on November 11th. Go get it today. David, always a great time. I thank you for your time. And uh, don't forget yeah, Jeff Scott Soto, Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Been a fan forever. I got to get him over to the East Coast one of these times. But, hey, whatever works, go support Jeff. And obviously, go support this guy, David. I love this shirt. Love for you, Ryan. He Man, I just, I just saw him in Frankfurt when I was over. Right after Jeff and I finished our tour, I flipped to Frankfurt. Um, and they were playing that night and I went out and, you know, it's so funny. I got to meet the, the mighty Mick box who I've been a fan of when I first saw kiss in 19, um, 
uh 77 uh i think it was february 6 1977 rock and roll over tour at the met center in uh bloomington which minneapolis minnesota uriah heap was the opening act and uh of course he had all the big hits easy living and you know all the stuff and um so all and i and i became a fan for my my whole life i've been a fan of theirs and so to finally get to see them they were doing their 50th anniversary they played acoustic <laughs> excuse me they came out and they did a a big electric set. And so I got to go back, say hello to Mick. He was just the sweetest, kindest human being you could ever imagine. And um, looked great, played great. And it was just, I mean, that's why, man, I fly the colors. I, I love me some Uriah Heap. I, I got to hang out with Mick and Bernie. They opened up for Judith Priest up here, uh, over here in Albany, maybe well, was right before COVID. And like yeah. you said, just a genuine cool soul. And I've been a fan forever. You mentioned Kiss. I think it's sir. My first Kiss concert was in a New Haven Coliseum in Connecticut in 77, 77, 78, and I want to say 77, and ACDC opened up, and they knew what the hell ACDC was. Yeah, Where's yeah. Angus running around, but they got your attention, although everybody was there to see Kiss, but sure. it was like, it was like, well, Man. it was an interesting thing because they went right from, um, they went right from Destroyer into rock and roll over and they didn't change their costumes for rock and roll over and then they went straight into love gun which of course they changed the whole stage set and the costumes and everything but those three records kind of ran right right into each other <laughs> they just didn't come off the road but for like a month to make a record then they're right back out again so there's uh it's it, yeah 76 to 78 yeah. probably almost 79 man it was that yeah, those guys they were just relentless man it was uh they taught us all how to do it, you know, so we I guess so. Best. I yeah. guess so. Well, again, David, thank you for your time. Everybody go out and buy Love the you. bundle. You will certainly not be disappointed. But all I get, I can't get any, this is great. I mean, I don't know. I can keep the guy on for two hours, but he's got to go because I'm just, a bunch of other people behind me want to chat with him, man. I do. The yeah. Amazing David Ellison right here on Pat Soundbites on Plug Podcast.